Hey guys, so welcome for a second episode of uh, Learn to Play Company of Heroes 2 with uh, Zero, which is me. Uh, today we'll, uh, I don't have any special guests unfortunately, so uh, so you'll have to uh, stick around with me. I'll be uh, going through the Austria play, with, which is the uh, German uh, the German army. Um, I'll start by going uh, going through all the different uh, tiers and then uh, show maybe the best commanders to, to play with 1v1 and between each uh, tiers I'll um, I'll uh, go through your questions so um, so maybe just uh, save your questions and then when I ask you guys if you have any questions uh, just um, just uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and ask so I'll jump in game here. I'm gonna go in game versus uh, an easy computer. So give me some time for me to to explain you guys what I what I want to explain. So uh, first, I'll um, when you start with the Austria, um, the Austria or the German army, uh, you cannot build any units except pioneers, which is your engineers from your headquarters. So what you want to do as soon as possible is take your pioneers and build your infantry company. Before that, I'll just go through what the pioneers can do. Uh, your pioneers, uh, obviously, they're the units who's going to build your, uh, your, your, um, your buildings or bunkers, repair your tanks. Um, they also can be upgraded with um, uh, flamethrowers, which cost 60 munitions, and they can be upgraded with a uh, hazard removal package so uh, with that you'll be able to cut uh, wire and um, also um, reveal any mines and defuse them on the field so if you see your uh, your opponent you're going with uh, if you get killed by some mines early on it's a good idea to uh, upgrade that and get uh, your uh, and get the hazard removal uh, package with your engineers so you can reveal any mines and what you want to do then is uh, advance uh, any big army with your pioneers, so your army won't uh, be going, won't be hitting those mines. Um, second of all, your um, your uh, engineers, what they can build at the beginning is the infantry company, which you'll need to produce your standard uh, combat units, which are uh, um, grenadiers. They can also build. They're the ones who's going to build uh, munition or fuel cache over strategic points as we explained uh, last week. They can also build uh, defensive uh, uh, bunkers. Uh, the bunkers can be upgraded later. Uh, we'll go through that uh, with uh, an MG a med, a med bunker or a reinforcement bunker. So I'll explain that later. They can build barbed wire and mines. So your, uh, your, uh, your engineers can do quite some things and uh, so they're even though they uh, they don't maybe don't appear important for the battle they are important for for supporting your army so you don't want to lose them so uh, what I'll do uh, now is go ahead and do and build the infantry uh, company so that's the first thing you'll want to do um, when starting the game with with uh, the Germans is build your infantry company then uh, what you can do is hold shift and click some positions on the map. So as soon as they finish building, they'll uh, they'll go capture the territories. So uh, like I explained last week, last week, sorry, when holding shift and giving other commands, it they will queue up. So after uh, building that, they will capture this. After capturing this, they will go capture this point and etc. So now that I have my infantry uh, company built, I'll go ahead and build some uh, grenadiers. <clears throat> I'll actually go ahead and build each of uh, one of each uh, unit of the of this uh, of this building, which is again called infantry uh, company. What you'll want to do also each building you can even the headquarters you can set a rally point. So what a rally point does is. Uh, it will, your units will uh, unit will head to that position once they are deployed on the field. So um, so if I set the point here, 
My units will appear from this side of the map and start work, uh, start uh, traveling by there. And if I set the rally point uh, here, it will appear from this side of the map and start w walking through towards the rally point. So uh, on this map, your units can appear from this uh, road or this road here. And depending on your uh, the rally point you set, they will appear to the closest one. So now if we look at the uh, the Grenadiers. So the Grenadiers are your main, uh, as, at least for the beginning of the war, they're your main uh, units to, uh, to battle with. They're your main infantry. So um, what they can do... Um, Obviously, they, they fight. They're formed up of four men. Um, even though the uh, Soviet has a conscript with six men, their DPS is all, is uh, is the same and the uh, the uh, their health as well. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, of uh, models. The the so the, each model for the Austria will be for the Grenadier. Sorry, are a bit more powerful than each model of uh, the conscripts. Now what what the the uh, the grenadiers are good for are obviously uh, like I said they're used as your main um, your main um, infantries so you want to go on the field with them and try to uh, and hold some uh, some territory what they can do is um, they can use a uh, Panzerfaust so the Panzerfaust for 25 munitions they can that can that's good to use versus any uh, vehicles. So uh, when you do that against the vehicles, they will dam it will damage the engine, the vehicle's uh, engine. So that's a good uh, thing to do. If, uh, for example, if you have a, an anti-tank gun waiting here, and you see a vehicles coming here, so it's a good idea to use the Panzerfaust to hit to kill its engine, and you can uh, and you can uh, finish it off with your uh, with your anti-tank gun that you had here, for example. Another ability that the uh, grenadiers have is uh, is a rifle grenade shot which does uh, pretty good damage in order to have access to the uh, to the uh, rifle uh, grenade shot you need to upgrade your uh, your tier to uh, to uh, the uh, to battle phase one so um, in order to do that you'll have to click go to your headquarters and that's where you upgrade your uh, battle phases and you'll have to click battle phase one and it does take some time and it does cost uh, 200 manpower and 25 fuel in order to uh, in order to do this. So I'll just bring go here and uh, help my um, my uh, my piles here. And if you give me a second, guys, I'll just restart the game uh, because uh, my opponent is uh, also a German player, so it's going to be better. Uh, if I have some uh, examples to show you, it would be better if it's against Soviets. Just give me one second, I'll reload the game. And I'll show you again the... Uh, I'll show you again uh, how you should start as a uh, as an Austria. So a uh, quick recap here. So again, first thing you want to do is uh, build your uh, infantry company with your pioneers. Then what I tend to do is hold shift, queue up where I need to. So. Uh, Just give me a second again, guys. Uh, one of uh, someone just offered to be a um, to be the AI, <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll take his uh, I'll take his offer. It's gonna be easier if I have some examples to show you. And after I'll actually be doing a game against uh, Lassa Struppen, so uh, just to show you how it is during a game, how I play and what I think and what I do. And hopefully he can help you. Well, let me just find him here.
So just hang on guys, well, I'll just wait for Lost Ash Troopin to join my game and uh, then I'll uh, I'll go ahead and explain uh, explain the other units from tier 1. In the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. It's a good time to uh, to ask if you do. My rank uh, 1v1 with uh, with Soviets right now is uh, 296 and with um, Germans it's uh, 155. Here I'll link you my player's card. Sorry guys, I'm just waiting for my partner who should join my game soon. So let me know uh, where, where are you guys from, if you're new to the game, how many hours you've played, or uh, if you just bought it. And again, don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay guys, so I got lost a stupid uh, lost uh, troopin with me. So he's going to help me out um um uh, to give you the examples I want to uh, I want to give. So um so I'll uh, I'll go ahead now and show you how I usually start with Austria and then uh, go ahead and uh, go in more details with each of the units. So like I was saying uh, before you wanna you wanna build your infantry company as soon as possible, cause that's what's gonna uh, give you the ability of uh, building uh, the um, grenadiers, which are your main infantry uh, combat unit. And uh, while that's happening, I tend to hold shift and queue up my commands to go and capture other uh, other territories. So after my engineers are done, they're going to cap other uh, territories. 
then I'll start uh, as soon as possible. You want to start producing your um, your uh, your infantries. So you'll go ahead and start with a grenadier. I'll talk about uh, build orders afterwards. Uh, but now I just want to show you each of the uh, tier one. Uh, so this uh, this is the first uh, the first tier of each tier one uh, units. So if you hear people talking about tier one units, that means your uh, grenadiers, your uh, your MG42 mortars, and snipers. So I'm just gonna. So I'll go through again the, the Grenadiers, they're your main uh, infantry combat uh, unit. Uh, so those are, are the ones you'll start with. And um, what they can do as an ability is you have the pa Panzerfaust at 25 uh, munitions to uh, to take out any vehicle's uh, engine. And it does also do uh, damage. Depending if it's a uh, medium or a heavy tank, uh, the, the, the Panzerfaust might not penetrate. So what that means is it might not damage the engine. It will still do some a little bit of damage to the tank, but uh, not not that much. Uh, for uh, so what you want to do for uh, if you're gonna Panzerfaust a, a a vehicle, uh, especially if it's a uh, if it's a light vehicle, it will go through for sure. If it's a medium or a heavy vehicle, uh, you want to Panzerfaust try to Panzerfaust from uh, to its back armor. So there's more chances of it of it penetrating and killing the engine. So uh, I'll just ask uh, Lastrupen to uh, build some vehicles here so I can demonstrate. Um, the other ability is the uh, rifle grenade shot, and in order to use it. Uh, you need to upgrade to uh, Battle Phase uh, 1, uh, which is Tier 2, which is going to give you access to Tier 2 units also. And to upgrade to Battle, field, uh, battle Phase 1, uh, you need 200 manpower and 25 uh, fuel. So um, before doing that, you tend to build a couple of units. Again, I'll go through build orders afterwards. Your Grenadiers also have uh, the ability for 16 munitions to upgrade with a MG light uh, uh, light machine gun. So um, it's very powerful. It does cost a lot. But uh, one important thing to note about the um, the uh, LMG is that it only fires if your uh, if your infantries are not moving. So if you do upgrade, and I'll give you an example of that, if you do upgrade uh, your grenadiers with a LMG, it's better to uh, to use them while they're not. Uh, it's better to um, to keep them still. Obviously, if there's a Molotov being thrown at you, or uh, or or something else, uh, you you or motors getting uh, motor uh, shots getting uh, near you, so you want to move from there, but. If they're in a fight, you wanna you don't want them to uh, you don't want them in movement with a LMG. You want them standing still so they can use it. So maybe um, I'll just show you an example of that. <clears throat> While I'm waiting for uh, my partner here to bring uh, some conscripts to the middle. I'll show you the other unit, which is a uh, the MG42. So that's another tier one unit. Uh, like I've shown last week, the MG42 is a uh, support uh, unit, so it will suppress uh, enemy uh, enemy infantries. And if you want to deploy it in a certain position, you can hold the right mouse button and then uh, release it in order for for the MG to deploy. In that position, so now it's gonna its arc of fire is gonna go that that way. So it's very vulnerable to um, to uh, small arms fire. So small arms fires is uh, you know your your standard uh, uh, infantry's uh, uh, guns or rifles. So you need to keep it more in the background and keep it to support. 
So now you can see the uh, you can see the light machine gun firing. So that's that's what you want to do. You don't want to move. You don't want to be moving your uh, your grenadiers when it's fighting with the light machine guns. So, for example, if I start moving the 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 grenadiers here, they um here I'll move them here. The 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 light machine gun doesn't shoot. Only your only the the models with the the rifles are shooting. In order for that that model with the light machine gun to shoot, you need to you need to you need for them to stand still, and then you'll see it starts shooting, and you can hear it. I'll just lower my uh, game sound so you guys can hear me better. So um, I just want to show you the Panzerfaust now. So guys, again, uh, I'll just go through all of the uh, tier one units, and uh, after I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll uh, take some questions. So here, if I want to use the Panzerfaust, you see it has a it has a range of fire. So you want to get into that range of the vehicle to fire it. So now you're in that range, you can you can use it, and you'll see that it's it's gonna since it's a light vehicle, it will do a lot of damage, and it will kill the engine. Unfortunately, I wanted to show you that the vehicle was going slower, but it got shot with a from a <laughs> a mortar. But uh, I think you get the um, I think you get the point. So the Panzerfaust will do a lot of damage to light uh, to light vehicles, and will kill the engine as well. Uh, and will always kill the engine for to a light vehicle. It will uh, kill the engine of a medium vehicle if you get it. Uh, from the rear most of the time and even if from the front it might penetrate it's a it's a roll of dice and might penetrate might not so your best chance is to try to hit it from uh, uh, the tank from their uh, its rear armor now uh, as we explained uh, last week there's a veterancy for your unit they can be uh, vet 1 vet 2 vet 3 so I vet 1 the uh, the ability from um, from their grenadiers is to uh, the f uh, field first aid. So uh, for 20 munitions, you can um, you can uh, um, heal some another uh, another infantry uh, or another unit. Um, it cannot heal itself. So for example, uh, I can come here, and it does take some time. So if you're gonna do that, you're better not you you better uh, do that in a safe spot when you know you're not gonna be fighting because it does take some time. So if I if I select uh, other oh, advent ones yet, so I can show you, but uh, here I'll uh, I'll get those to uh, reinforce and vet up. Now I explain uh, for the MG42, uh, it has a it's uh, so you want to use it in the background. You wanted to use it to support, and it does take a lot of damage. So what you want to do with with Austrians or Germans is uh, is you want to use the MG42. It can be very powerful, uh, but it needs to be used properly. So because it does take a lot of damage and it does take some time for it to deploy, uh, what you want to do is first scout with your infantry ahead through the fog of war. And then you want your MG to follow those uh, those infantry to support. So once you're... Now I don't know where my enemy is, okay? But here I see a conscript squad. So I know that my that's where I need to set up with my MG. So now I bring up my MG following my my grenadier and set them up preferably behind some cover and in the arc of fire that's gonna that's gonna help um, that's gonna help my grenadier so that's how you play with your MG you don't you never bring it up alone uh, through the fog of war because it's gonna take a lot of and it's gonna take some time to set up and if you and if you set up and your enemy sees you setting up, he might, might have time to go through that arc of fire here. And just once your MG is set up, uh, it's just that enemy that's here won't be getting suppressed. And just start shooting to your towards your MG and uh, probably die. So if you see another, another enemy, another uh, conscript squad going through the flank here, uh, 
unless you have other units to support your machine gun, then you'll probably want to retreat it. Or you start wanna you maybe you wanna just not, um, uh, demount it, and then d place it place it somewhere else. So you have to think a bit in advance. So for example, one strategy or one thing to think about is let's say okay, my enemies, my enemy here, I retreated. So he knows my MG was there. So maybe a good thing now is what to do is move it somewhere else. So because he's gonna try, if he's smart, he's gonna try to go around it here, like here and here. So what you wanna do is maybe set it up here. So if he tries to flank your MG that was here, he's gonna meet it again. So you don't always want to keep your MG at the same position. Um, at Vet 1, the MG has um, fire incendiary armor piercing rounds for 50 munitions. I don't see that used a lot. It's effective, especially uh, against uh, light vehicles. So, um, you know, it's something you, can, it's something you can use, especially if you're up against a Scott car. But usually, when your MG gets to Vet One and you see a Scott, uh, uh, you won't the Scott car won't really be in the game anymore. Um, but again, if you do see a Scott car and your MG uh, is Vet One, then it's a good thing to think about using the uh, the incendiary armor piercing rounds. Uh, it's going to do a lot of damage to uh, those uh, light vehicles. Now we'll go with the motor. The motor also is a support uh, as a support unit. So, uh, when playing the Germans, you have to think that a lot of your tier one units are support units. You don't want them in the main in the main battle. You want them in the background supporting your 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 grenadiers. So your grenadier grenadiers here. Uh, so again, a good place for the mortars is like behind. You want them to have access to the battlefield or to the front lines because that's where you want them to shoot. So you like. Most of the time on this map, if we look at the tactical map here, the battle will mostly be in the middle here. So you want your uh, motors to be able to fire in this uh, at that position around here, uh, but you don't want them to be taking. Uh, you don't want them to be uh, in the in the battle, obviously. Like like the the machine gun, they'll take uh, they'll take uh, damage fast, and uh, so they if uh, if they're out in the open getting shot by small arm fires, they will die quickly. So, uh, you want to set it up like exactly around here, where where they're behind a hedge. Your un your enemy has to like go through the front line, go through your army, and through around those those hedge in order to to shoot your to your uh, to your mortar. So you want to keep them again um, behind the battlefield. So this would be a good place. This would be a good place. If your if your opponent was managed to push you towards more of your base, you can even keep them in your base here. So this is your own base. You can keep them behind green cover uh, in your own base. So they shoot around here. So you don't want them, like I said, you don't want them in the main uh, the main uh, uh, battle. Now I'll show you that once they're set up, they'll they will automatically start firing uh, to any enemy uh, in their range. So if you look. Uh, if you see here, they should be, I'll just uh, make them set up here, and they need to set up and and and, and demount like the uh, machine gun. So you see they're going to they're gonna start firing as soon as they see units in their range. I'm just going to retreat these guys. If they don't see any any um, infantries, they won't shoot. But they also have the ability where um, uh, they can do a mortar barrage. So the mortar barrage, they will shoot. Uh, it's an ability that doesn't cost anything, and what what it's going to do is they're going to shoot a lot faster for some period of time. <coughs> and you can do that anywhere in their range. So if you select. Uh, if you select the, the motor uh, barrage, uh, you'll see the, the circle here. There's a red circle like this, and that's the range of the uh, of the motor, where the motor can, can shoot. So let's say I saw the enemies, um, and the reason we're still seeing them here is because we hit them before. So when you hit an enemy, you'll see them through the fog of war for some time. So now we know they were here. So 
even though we don't see them, you can use the more um, the uh, mortar barrage ability to say, look, shoot here because I know there's some there's some enemies there. So you can do that before sending him some uh, units like that. Again, it's used as a support weapon, so they'll start they'll start shooting, and then you can bring in your units. Your uh, your uh, your grenadiers to start to fight, and they'll uh, and you see they've already been taking damage, and uh, if they would have been you see right now if they've been they they've been shot, so you're only getting damage from two units instead of six. So that's how you keep your men alive and ba and and uh, battle eff efficiently. So uh, now I'll uh, go ahead and show you. Well, actually, I'll just uh, finish with um, I'll finish with the uh, the mortar. The mortar also has a uh, smoke barrage, so that can be useful. So I'll just show you uh, what it does. <coughs> So if I shoot a smoke barrage here, it gives me the chance for my units to advance. You see they were in red cover, so negative cover, and and then go and attack. They won't get any damage from the conscripts that were here, and now they're, they're in cover in order to fight. So that's a good way of uh, advancing your units um, using the smoke, like that they won't get any, they won't get shot at while they're, uh, they're going uh, through the field with negative cover or no cover. So that's one thing. Another thing you can use the smoke for is let's say you had a tank here and there was an AT gun, an anti-tank gun here and it was getting shot and it's almost dead. You can use that ability again right here in between you and your enemy so it stops firing at you. So in an event where your, ta your tank is low health and there's an anti-tank gun or another tank here you want to use that like use that like that you can give your tank a chance to to um, to escape. Now uh, you can um, you can tell the um, the mortar to hold fire, and the reason why that exists is because uh, two things. Let's say you don't want to reveal its position, so you don't want it to start firing uh, by itself when it see when you see a unit. The second reason is because it can also kill your your um, your own uh, your own guys. So for example, if I mortar if I mortar here, you'll see that my grenadiers will die from my own fire. <coughs> Sorry guys. Just let me a chance to drink a bit of water since... Uh... So as you can see, my guys got killed here with my own uh, mortar fire. And I know I showed you that last week, but you, there's a kill count here, and you can view uh, how many uh, infantry, in, uh, how many kills that unit has. So, for example, the mortar right now has uh, killed eight infantry, one vehicle, uh, buildings none, and two friendly uh, friendlies killed. So you want to, so you want to be able to uh, stop your mortar from firing. Uh, you can either do that by stop; it will stop uh, doing whatever it's doing. And hold fire will until you uh, enable it again. It won't fire. So if you do that, it's important to remember to uh, to enable it once more. Um, <clears throat> it also has counter barrage. So what that means is, uh, if you enable this ability, if your enemy has any type of uh, barrage or uh, or um, mortar or artillery, it will try to fire to that to that uh, specific unit to counter barrage. So that's uh, pretty straight to the point. Um, one thing I forgot to mention last week uh, for the, the your basic play is um, his hotkeys. So uh, an important hotkeys to use and to learn is uh, is T. T will retreat your units. So let's say you're in a fight and your units are low health or uh, you only have one man left. You wanna you don't wanna be looking for using your mouse and looking for the button here. So try to learn, each game you do, try to learn one new uh, one new hotkey. And for those who just joined, uh, just uh, save your questions uh, for uh, after tier one, I'll be explaining the uh, the sniper, and after I'll take some uh, some questions. And after I'll go through uh, tier two. 
So, uh, so you don't want to be uh, looking for the retreat button. You just want to be able to press T and your units will retreat. Another good one to learn is, um, is R. So R is for reinforce. So for example, I just clicked the unit here that I saw that only has one guy left and I press T so it's ret retreating right now. So that's another way you can do it. So you can always, it's a good, uh, it's, it's always a good thing to keep an eye on your, uh, on all your units here. So let's say you're fighting here and you have other units on the right and you see that one unit knows only has one man uh, left. So you can, uh, you can click it and press T and they will retreat. So the other button, the other hotkey that I was saying is R. So R is reinforce. So you want to be able to uh, reinforce quickly, not always go to look your, at your button here. So you select your squads, press R many times and you'll see when you select an individual uh, squad it will uh, it will uh, reinforce it will reinforce so I'll just show counter barrage here um, while we set that up I'll start explaining the, the sniper so your, your, your sniper is a one-man uh, sniper versus the uh, Soviet one uh, but it has more durability uh, per model uh, and it cloaks faster and, it's, uh, shoot, and it shoots faster from the Soviet one. So um, uh, also it's an, another support unit so what you can you always want to keep it in the background and as you can see it has a large field of view so what you can use it for is to scout ahead for your for your uh, for your army so in case the other uh, your opponent has an MG you can scout you can scout ahead with your uh, with your um, <coughs> with your sniper and uh, see where where it's placed and then use and use that for so you can um, uh, direct your infantry to flank that MG so here's the here's the uh, so the the uh, the other motor will use the counter. So you see, as soon as I pressed it, it activated and it's trying to shoot the other motor that's that's shooting right now. So that's what the the counter barrage does. Now again, with your sniper, uh, you can hold fire like your uh, like your motor. Obviously, uh, the reason why that exists is because you don't want all you you want don't want to uh, your sniper to start shooting uh, by itself and reveal its position if it's unsupported. So it's a good idea. Let's say uh, you want to keep it in a fight. You don't necessarily want to retreat it. You just want to keep it uh, in uh, cloak. And by the way, for it in order for it to be cloak, it needs to be in cover. So you see right now, uh, I don't want him to shoot. Let's say I didn't have any units here. Like I don't have any units here. I don't want him to shoot, and for him, my enemy, to start coming and chase him. So I want to wait for for some of my units to uh, to come and help him. So I can put on uh, hold fire, and uh, then when I when it's supported, I can turn it back off. Uh, it has an ability uh, at vent one to uh, fire an incendiary explosive round. What's that? What that's going to do is uh, it's going to, so I'm just going to start shooting off some units here and try to get it out of it once so I can show you that ability after. Um, it will uh, stun the uh, the other, uh, the infantries, so they'll stop uh, advancing. So it's a good thing to use. It does cost uh, 45 uh, munitions. I find it's a, it's a lot, but let's say it's better to you to to uh, spend 45 munitions than to lose your sniper because your your sniper because your sniper is very uh, expensive especially early uh, early in the game so another good practice is as soon as it shoots uh, uh, an enemy you you can uh, you try to back it off because you're obviously your opponent's going to try to chase it so you always want to keep it like i said behind the behind the front line So yeah, like I was saying, the that ability is uh, it is expensive, so I don't really often use it. But if in case an emergency, uh, there's a squad, uh, there's an enemy, uh, there's enemy infantry chasing it, and you need to stop them, you can use it to, and so they can uh, stop chasing you, and then maybe retreat your sniper. So in order, uh, so like that, you can uh, save it and not uh, and not lose it. 
I'll take any questions right now. Halky boy 537 ask how to um, what to do versus Soviet snipers. Now this is a tricky tricky question. Uh, the reason why is because uh, if you play against a very good player. Uh, and he's using Soviet snipers. It can be really, really, really difficult right now to uh, to do something against the the snow Soviet snipers. I'll ex I'll tell you what are the bet the the best uh, counters. Uh, and in the meantime, if there's other questions, uh, let me know. <clears throat> First thing you can do do against Soviet snipers is um, is use the um, the rifle grenade shot. The rifle grenade shot has a good range. And obviously, if you're playing against a good uh, Soviet player, he's gonna try to keep uh, the uh, Soviet sniper out of out of the way. So you want to use that rifle grenade shot to uh, to try and kill the uh, the Soviet snipers. And most of the time, if you do land a good uh, uh, grenade shot, rifle grenade shot on on them, it will kill both of the of the uh, of the units. It depends where it hits. So if there's a, because the Soviet snipers are a two man uh, squad. If one model is here, for example, and the other model is here, and your grenade hits here, it will probably only kill that unit that's really closest to it. So you want to try. That's you know that's uh, that's hard, but you want to try to get them one day, once they're close to each other. But when you're going to be using your rifle grenade, so you see the range it has. It has it has decent decent range. Um, Sorry, that was the uh, the minimum range. So your rifle grenade has a minimum. It cannot shoot within this, but it can shoot uh, within the first circle, red circle here, and the second one that's here. So anywhere between here and here. So it has a pretty good range. So you can see here, it shot all the way, uh, all the way here. Um, now an interesting. Uh, another way of countering uh, of countering snipers is a guy with the rifle grenade, but when your uh, when your uh, uh, grenadiers are vet two, when your grenadiers are vet two, they get a range increase with their rifle grenades. So they'll shoot. They can be they can shoot even further with the rifle grenade. So that's another another way of uh, countering uh, Soviet snipers. Um, <clears throat> In uh, earlier patches, uh, the best way was using the. Uh, I'll just go ahead and build tier two because I'll be needing it soon. It was to build uh, the scout car from the tier uh, um, tier two. Uh, right now, though, the scout car is uh, very. Uh, I think a lot of people will agree that the the scout car uh, is uh, is really weak right now. So here's a Soviet Soviet sniper. You saw it, we saw them right here. So we can try to. Let's hope they was still there. No. It doesn't need it doesn't need to reload. Um, the scout car is um, <coughs> is uh, is very weak right now, uh, and and guards uh, on the Soviet side. So the uh, the guard uh, squad uh, comes up pretty early. So I think that's a change that's coming in the next patch. So um, it's the scout car. Honestly, I feel it's pretty useless right now. Uh, so it was the counter to uh, a Soviet sniper, but right now it's a bit useless. So that's why I was saying the uh, uh, the Soviet sniper right now it's really hard to to counter against a good uh, Soviet player. Another thing you can use is the mortar. Because the mortar um, will shoot uh, as good range and will shoot at anything it sees, so that's a good way of uh, of uh, of hoping to kill the sniper. And indeed, it does take some luck, but that's another. I'll just uh, try to rifle grenade it now. So I know that it's here somewhere. So let's try to. So there you go. It killed one of the one of the men. We weren't able to see where the other one was. That's. But you'll see how it dies off pretty quick if you get close to it. You see one shot and it's almost dead. Okay. So uh, your best luck is to use the rifle grenades with combination of a uh, of a, a mortar and. Um,
and uh, what you want to try to do to as well is let's say uh, let's say the the Soviet sniper is was uh, was here okay what you want to do okay while you're trying to fight it here for sure it's gonna back off like towards his base so before engaging it before bringing the squad here you maybe want to plan uh, a flank or to go behind him so again let's say the sniper was here you can start you can start by bringing these guys here behind the house use a house for cover so that you don't know uh, the your open doesn't know you have a squad here now you can bring your your infantry squad towards the sniper let's say that the, these trees here are that your your snipe uh, the enemy sniper so it's gonna start shooting off your your squad here and while it, it does that you can bring your units sorry I put them into the house you can bring your units around here and surprise it you know you're gonna be really that much closer to it or cut off its retreat path if he tries to retreat with it so that's uh, that's uh, another thing you can try to do <coughs> uh, another question other questions before I uh, I go to uh, tier two? Yes, sorry. Uh, I'll uh, another way of uh, good point, uh, Leon. Another uh, another good uh, counter with uh, for snipers is this commander, the Jaeger Infantry Doctrine, where you have ambush and uh, Jaeger Light Infantry Upgrade, uh, which will give uh, the uh, the possibility of infantry, your your grenadiers to upgrade with the, the uh, G forty trees. The G forty three is a very powerful rifle. It's almost sniper like. Uh, so if uh, your grenadiers are able to get one or two shots on the on the snipers uh, with the G forty trees, well here, well I'll I'll do one. You'll see that it will kill kill it fast, and uh, you can also use. You can also upgrade your unit so it can uh, camouflage. So let's say um, again your 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 army is in this area, and you again you again have uh, you know that a sniper is going to probably be coming. So what you can do is uh, I'll just wait for this to upgrade. Is you can set up your uh, infantry here, and then <coughs> and then. Um, once this is upgraded, you'll see that they'll uh, they'll be in camouflage, and so it's gonna. If he brings this sniper here and starts firing, and then they're kind of camouflage, they'll uh, they'll surprise uh, they'll surprise the um, that sniper pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, they'll kill that sniper pretty fast. What you can do also is um, let me just ask. Uh, I'll do another episode. On commanders, because there's a lot to there's a lot of commanders. Uh, can grants heal pack? Uh, yes, they can. They can heal uh, any other infantries. So uh, now, what I want to show you, uh, like I was saying, I'm gonna go through the commanders uh, uh, to another session because there's a lot to go through. I'll I'll continue with uh, the, uh, the German army now and just the basics. Um, so I just want to show you how uh, powerful the G43 is, and as, also I want to show you um, what this ability does, the casualty inter integration. I don't see a lot of people using it. So if there's a if there's a uh, a dead or half alive infantry uh, left on the field, it cannot be dead. It has to be uh, like here. It's still surviving. You click on it. And you'll see all the. Um, did it work? Anyways, didn't work. But um, if they're all oh, here, there he is. But now I have this infantry retreated, so I can't show you. So that's an ability that if it, it's it's time consuming to do it because you need to find an infantry that's like in the process of dying, like him. <laughs> and once you click on it, um, it will reveal all the infantries on the map. On your mini map, so uh, it's quite interesting. 
So if if you have time in a battle and you think about it, it's good to use because it can be very useful to know where uh, where your uh, op opponent is planning his next uh, next assault. Um, so I'll go ahead now and uh, start building uh, T2. Uh, any questions?